Een hele goede morgen. Volgens mij zijn we live bij het, uh, een primeur, de eerste editie van het uh, online Social Enterprise Overheidscongres. Heel hartelijk dank aan, uh, aan iedereen die hierbij is. En um, meteen excuses voor, um, <coughs> voor de uh, hiccup. Uh, dit soort dingen gaan natuurlijk niet voor, uh, zonder technische problemen. Wat dat betreft uh, is het net een echt event. Um, ja, ik vind het hartstikke leuk dat jullie een grote getalie hebben opgegeven voor, voor de online editie van dit event. Um, we organiseren het Social Enterprise Overheidscongres al sinds 2014. Echt met als doel om die samenwerking tussen sociale ondernemingen en overheden, zijn er dat gemeenten, zijn er dat provincies, is dat het Rijk te verbeteren. Um, nou, als we even kort terugkijken um, naar 2014 en nu, dan, ja, dan is de wereld van sociaal ondernemen ontzettend veranderd, heeft zich ontzettend ontwikkeld en um, nou, dat zien we ook in het programma terug. Um, voordat ik daar wat meer over ga vertellen, um, iets meer over het platform waar we vandaag gebruik maken en hoe we dat zo goed mogelijk kunnen gebruiken um, om tot een succesvol event te komen. Uh, het is helaas hier en daar niet zonder, uh, zonder hiccups, dit soort digitale dingen, maar ik zie dat we in grote getalen uh, 75 man aanwezig uh, zijn. Dus ik ben daar erg blij mee. Um, om de connectie zo goed mogelijk te houden is het belangrijk om andere programma's, e-mailprogramma's, et cetera, zoveel mogelijk uit te zetten. Um, en het werkt als volgt. Um, links in je scherm zie je reception, stage, sessions en networking. Um, stage is ja, het zogenoemde main stage. Dat is het grote podium bij een, bij een traditioneel congres. Daar is de opening, daar is zometeen Jerry Higgins, daar is Mona Keizer, um, daar is uh, Robert Berkout, prestatie van het PwC-onderzoek, et cetera. De pl het plenaire podium, om het zo te zeggen. Vervolgens gaan we um, om, um, om kwart over elf beginnen de deelsessies. Die zijn allemaal te vinden bij sessions. Als je daar zo meteen, niet nu, uh, zo meteen op klikt, vind je daar alle, alle deelsessies. Um, ja, je hoeft je niet van tevoren in te schrijven. Je kan gewoon degene bijwonen die je wil. Kan je nou niet kiezen? Geen probleem. Alles wordt opgenomen en later uh, beschikbaar gemaakt. Dus um, nou, ga gewoon naar de sessie die je het meest interessant vindt. En um, dan de ander um, kan je later terugkijken. Um, maar een belangrijk onderdeel van deze ochtend is ook het, het netwerk. Hè? Um, ja, ik denk dat velen van jullie, uh, we doen ook ieder jaar een evaluatie. Hè? Waarom ga je nou naar dit congres? En dan is eigenlijk uh, nieuwe contacten opdoen en bijpraten met, met oude contacten is een van de belangrijkste, uh, onder, ja, belangrijkste redenen om naar dit congres te gaan. En dat willen we zoveel mogelijk nabootsen. Um, en dat is ook de reden dat we dit platform gebruiken. Want als je zo meteen, uh, niet nu, op networking klikt en dan ready, dan word je aan een, uh, aan een random persoon uh, gematcht en dat gaan we zo meteen uh, met z'n allen doen, zodat iedereen in ieder geval een aantal nieuwe contacten opdoet. En um, nou ja, ik, ik stel voor om uh, twee à drie gesprekken van vijf minuten te doen en uh, die te kick-offen met de vraag, wat hoop je vandaag uit dit congres te halen? Um, later... Um, later in de middag, eind van de middag, gaan we dat weer doen. Uh, met een andere vraag dan, daarover later meer. Um, maar op deze manier um, nou ja, proberen we ervoor te zorgen dat iedereen uh, ook nieuwe contacten opdoet. Um, ga ik nu over naar de introductie van Gary Higgins. I will change to English to introduce Mr. Gary Higgins... He's the managing director of the Social Enterprise World Forum, a true legend in the world of social enterprise. Um, yeah, and the Social Enterprise World Forum every year, um, well, connects social entrepreneurs, practitioners, policymakers, researchers from all over the world. Uh, normally, on a, a somewhere in the world, the planned event was in Canada, Halifax, uh, this year, but. Obviously, that couldn't go through, so they went fully digital. Um, and the good news is um, everyone attending this event can also access the videos uh, of the whole Social Enterprise World Forum. But I'm going to ask 
Jerry, to tell a little bit more of what happened on that World Forum and what are the, the big global developments uh, we all need to know uh, more of in the Social Enterprise World Forum. So without further ado, over to you, Jerry. Thank you, Stefan, for the overstated introduction. And um, it doesn't feel like much of a legend here at eight o'clock on a wintry Scottish morning. Um, I want to start by why we decided to um, change to digital in in March when we realised that coronavirus was going to severely limit the ability of people around the world to um, uh, to connect with each other. Stefan, your audio still on? Okay. Um, we we realise that social enterprises are an essential part of building back better. Um, that current economic systems were increasing inequality, continuing to widen uh, a wealth gap, and that really the main drivers um, in most countries for uh, for economic growth were shareholder return and uh, and maximisation of profits. And it's pretty clear that that's um, damaging the planet. Um, it's creating an economy which is predominantly low wage. People are being exploited, and it's really increasing inequality uh, around the world. Uh, in addition, it's creating situations where. Rural populations are migrating in large numbers to cities and it's making rural communities unsustainable. And I think we all felt that the time was right just now to congregate the social enterprise movement, to bring people together, to share experiences and to look at how, as systems were effectively stopped in many countries, how social enterprise could ensure that they engaged early as economies were rebuilding um, uh, so that um, uh, because it's much easier to be part of something where you're, you're a strategic um, uh, player in terms of economic growth and economic planning um, than when you're at the outside complaining um, uh, that uh, things are unequal and are unfair. So we, we felt it was um, appropriate to take a risk with the social enterprise community and to do a digital only event. And this was against feedback where people felt that the most important thing for them from uh, our annual forum uh, is the connectivity. It's the ability to network with people, to, to, to break bread, to um, uh, have the coffee chat, have the bar chat. Um, and our sector is comprised mainly of small businesses. There, there, there aren't many huge global social enterprises. It's primarily one uh, of smaller businesses and they hugely value the connectivity that small businesses working in their individual communities um, exploring common values and common issues with others from, uh, from other communities around the world. So we didn't genuinely know um, uh, how many people would engage and what they would like um, and whether they would actually uh, uh, like an event um, that, that was virtual. Um, so if I reflect on where we started in 2008, um, we had um, 25 countries participating in 2008. It took us 10 years to double that number. It was 2017 in New Zealand when we reached the milestone of 51 countries. So it took us 10 years to double our, our, our country numbers. Um, but since 2017, by moving to a digital platform um, uh, this year, we actually had 102 countries participating in SEWF Digital. Um, that's much higher than we thought. And it clearly indicates that social enterprise um, and interest in social enterprise is truly global. Um, 102 countries really surpassed our expectations. Um, moving to a digital format also allowed us to um, engage um, more effectively and more widely with young people. Um, if you think about who's got the resources and the capacity to travel to um, various continents to attend um, a, a conference um, uh, that costs hundreds of dollars to, uh, uh, to to register and you've got your accommodation, your flight cost, uh, well, young people are, are unfairly disadvantaged um, in that. So we were able to use our digital format to um, engage with 
um, both geographies and target groups that we recognise were previously um, uh, disadvantaged by our in-person um, format. So we had the largest number of young people. We had 30% of the uh, of the participants um, in the event were under 30 years of age, um, and we were also able to address um, uh, on on stage the, the 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 gender issue that where around the world there's mapping of social enterprise. Um, uh, we know that the majority of the leaders are female, um, and this is in stark contrast with uh, uh, with the commercial sector um, uh, and we were able to have 59.5% uh, of the presenters at, at our event uh, re reflected the, the leadership of the social enterprise sector and that they were female. Um, one of the other important things we recognized both in the lead up and during the event um, is about virtual readiness. Uh, we had always planned to have a digital element or a virtual element to our World Forum in Halifax this year and every year going forward. Um, but actually, we felt that the social enterprise sector probably wasn't ready, um, that we'd have reasonable numbers. Um, uh, but the fact that COVID put the brakes on a global economy, it forced people to get into Teams and Zoom and um, other, other platforms. Um, well, then, um, in general, um, uh, there was a much higher level of virtual readiness when we opened our doors in September than there would have been if um, if COVID hadn't um, uh, um, existed. So it worked, I guess, in our favour in terms of the experiment. So we had significant numbers. Um, and uh, yes, we experience connectivity issues. And um, uh, as you discovered this morning, these aren't just um, in countries which have historically um, uh, connectivity challenges with poor broadband and low bandwidth. Um, also, some of the developed countries, um, uh, whether by um, fact that people were dialing in from home or from home offices, um, uh, we had some significant issues. Um, but in general, the virtual platform worked well. People really love the content. Um, and our follow the sun model, where we started at six o'clock in the morning in UK um, to enable us to engage with East Asia and Oceania and finish at 8 p.m. in the UK so that we were um, able to engage later in our day with the Americans. Um, that worked. It, 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 it was a more inclusive model um, than saying, well, our office hours are nine to five in the UK, so we're going to run our event from nine to five. And um, uh, the only option you have if you're in the Americas or in East Asia or Oceania is to either stay up or get up very late uh, or early um, or watch it on, on, on playback. So while that was punishing for our team, um, it, it really did work. Now we're producing a report at the moment and um, we'll be circulating that to everybody who attended um, in about two weeks. One of the main um, issues was um, around um, COVID and how have social enterprises um, uh, responded to COVID? And we, from the outset, we, we, were, uh, we were clear that we were going to um, uh, to showcase um, some of these responses. And for me, I think probably the some of the, the most effective responses weren't the individual organizations um, that had changed from producing whatever they produced to manufacturing PPE. It was the collaborative responses. Uh, we saw fabulous initiatives in places like Italy, where, where a consortium of cooperatives had put out a call saying, um, who is um, uh, who wants to join in, in in addressing some of the challenges that were being experienced in Northern Italy? And uh, uh, a consortium of, of cooperatives um, started manufacturing PPE um, using their, their their digital and laser experience, and um, and they got to really significant volumes um, uh, very quickly. And they found the process of collaboration um, much easier. Um, than many of the commercial sector um, agencies did uh, because collaboration in the commercial sector isn't as common um, uh, as it is in our in our social enterprise sector. One of the impressive examples came from Africa, from Ethiopia, where the Chiffon initiative brought together um, over 50 social enterprises. And this, other than their networking, this was the first collaborative venture that a network which is only 18 months old um, uh, held, and they looked at um, the challenges that the government in Ethiopia was having 
in in dealing with um, COVID-19. It's not a, um, a highly developed economy. There are um, significant challenges. There's no um, developed, well-developed public health system. There's no um, uh, public ambulance system. So the social enterprises got together and their response was around coordinating, um, yes, production of PPE, circulating, circulation of information through their broadcasting channels, uh, looking at mental health, looking at ambulances. Um, so they were able to do a very significant coordinated responses that really was a, a significant part of the national response in, in Ethiopia. And again, um, what made that easy for them was their collaboration. Some of the other um, aspects that pleased and surprised us um, was the reveals um, in some of the sessions of the outstanding quality and innovation um, uh, that we experienced through through the forum. I mentioned that people love the content and some folk have commented on sessions like um, we, we had a, a, um, a main stage session um, on Monday, Tuesday um, uh, throughout the day of inside social enterprise. So it was the equivalent of um, bringing people behind the scenes um, uh, in social enterprise to understand how does this enterprise work? And one of the really impressive ones was pre in in Amsterdam. But we are also ones like Soba in Australia, which is absolutely one to watch. Um, uh, Soba is an, an initiative that has come out of the Aboriginal community in, in Queensland and its production of um, alcohol-free craft beer. And um, this has gone from strength to strength, um, assisted by the various lockdown initiatives where that has, um, I guess, encouraged people to, to uh, order online and to be creative. Um, but this is tackling a huge social issue, which is the relationship between people both in the Indigenous community and in the community in general uh, with alcohol. And um, uh, I predict that this is going to um, uh, increase um, significantly to become uh, perhaps the major um, uh, outlet for alcohol free beer in, in all of Australia. Um, we had also some beautiful reveals in those um, inside social enterprise um, sessions um, on social enterprises um, in areas that um, I haven't visited, you probably haven't visited, and one that comes to mind is Manus del Uruguay, um, in, 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 in obviously in, in, in Uruguay, where um, they're producing um, extraordinary high quality crafts and, um, and garments um, and these are for sale at a global level and um, the, the, the behind the scenes video allowed us to understand the, uh, the quality of what was being produced but more importantly the mission of the enterprise and how it's critical to keep um, rural people in their communities to prevent migration to cities um, and uh, how they have been able to um, uh, tap into um, a global market um, and, and how they've done that. So there's there's lots of learning um, uh, um, uh, through these sessions and um, Stefan um, did ask me to reflect on um, some that I would encourage people to um, to look at, and that's really like asking who's your favourite child. Um, it's pretty impossible to do. Um, uh, what I would say is the people that have gone into playback have to date gone in for the more technical sessions. Um, the top five are on social impact and social procurement, um, and they're not on the inspiration and 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 motivation. Uh, we can maybe explore that a little bit later. But um, uh, there are 83 recorded sessions. Um, so um, there'll be something there for everybody. So depending on whether you're interested in something technical like social procurement or your interest is international development or rural or youth, um, uh, there'll be something there for you. And I'm going to finish with just mentioning the um, uh, the role of policymakers. We had a policy forum before our main event, and we're going to continue to have a separate policy forum each year. Um, uh, but what's really clear um, at Social Enterprise World Forum is that policymakers attend um, uh, because they learn and they're inspired and motivated 
and they get courage from recognizing that the steps that they feel they should take or they could take in their own country, um, uh, that they're not alone in this, that there are other uh, uh, countries introducing structure for things like social procurement, um, uh, structures that make it easier to start and to run a social enterprise. Much of the world still is in the non-profit, for-profit dilemma where it's not possible to register a legal form in many countries that allows you to trade as a social enterprise. Um, uh, you either need to be completely non-profit and can't trade or you're for-profit and you have no advantages uh, uh, whatsoever to recognise the fact that you're trying to um, uh, produce a social impact. So, um, uh, policymakers have been supporting each other um, on this journey. Um, we had um, high engagement of policymakers, um, and uh, if I was predict to predict the, the single most important theme to emerge, it's in the area of social procurement, where our conference identified that the increase in social procurement around the world, both with municipalities and very significantly with the commercial sector, is going to be the game changer for social enterprise um, in the next 10 years. So we're going to continue to engage with policymakers um, uh, to ensure um, that social enterprises are assisted by being in the supply chains of major commercial organizations and municipalities and central governments, rather than being the beneficiaries of their CSR. Stefan, I'm, that's, that's what you asked me to cover, so I'm happy to come back in if you have any questions. There you are, okay. Yes, am I, am I live again? You are. Sorry. A few, uh, you are? a few connection uh, uh, hiccups here. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jerry. That was a wonderful, wonderful overview of the global developments. And um, <clears throat> I think if I if I go on on procurement, uh, I think that's definitely a topic. Will um, yeah, it's becoming hotter and hotter here in the Netherlands as well. We're very proud to be part of the part of the bisocial movement. Obviously, with our own local flavor, that's how we like to do things over here. Um, yeah, procurement is definitely a topic that's uh, that's on the agenda for today. So again, many thanks, Jerry, uh, and many thanks to the Social Enterprise World Forum. We can use this platform to yeah to create a, a experience that comes closest to to meeting each other as as possible. Um, so I now digitally applaud for you uh, and switch back to, to Dutch to introduce the networking. Okay, Stefan, before before I finish, I just would like to, to have one last remark, which is one of the things that really pleased me as well was the our ability to showcase what's happening in the Netherlands through this event. Um, uh, SENL has been involved in quite a few social enterprise world forums, but this allowed us also to showcase what was happening in the city of Amsterdam, and 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 that was very significant. It 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 gave others around the world encouragement uh, that there is a city which is embracing circular economy, embracing donut economy, and actually taking a a, a long term view in what type of economy it wants in its citizens. So com commendations for that, and with that, I wish you a very good day. And, and a good conference. Okay. Geweldig. Um, ja, dan gaan we nu, ik zag al in de, in de chat dat er al, uh, al uh, <coughs> levendig werd uitgewisseld. Dat is ook de bedoeling. Ik zie dat we ondertussen met z'n 87 uh, hier zijn. Um, ja, en dat betekent dat... Um, dat het nu echt tijd is om naar het networking te gaan. Um, voordat ik dat doe, even nog een soort van de rest van het programma. Um, we beginnen vandaag om, um, of we gaan zo meteen verder om tien uur met de presentatie van, uh, of de highlights uit het nieuwste PwC-onderzoek over de samenwerking gemeente sociale ondernemingen. Dat is nog niet gepubliceerd, dus jullie krijgen als deelnemers van dit event exclusief inzicht in de, de laatste resultaten. 
nog voordat de rest van de wereld um, die kan zien. Um, daarna om kwart over tien, um, ja, toch wel de hoofdgast van vandaag, uh, staatssecretaris van Economische Zaken en Klimaat, Mona Keizer. Zij heeft vlak voor de zomer een mooie brief uh, naar, de, naar de Kamer gestuurd met hele mooie plannen om sociaal ondernemen in Nederland verder te stimuleren. Nou, daar gaan we natuurlijk haar even aan de tand voelen hoe dat nu zit, waar we staan, wat we nog kunnen verwachten, et cetera. Um, daarna komt Robert Berkhout, wethouder Duurzaamheid en Economie van de gemeente Haarlem. Uh, dit event zou oorspronkelijk in Haarlem plaatsvinden. En hij gaat meer vertellen over het actieprogramma Impact Ondernemen van de gemeente. Um, dan om 11 uur nemen we even, even kort pauze en om kwart over 11 starten de deelsessies. Dan voor nu um, ja, wil ik echt iedereen vragen om op networking te klikken. Um, en dan ready, dan word je aan iemand anders gekoppeld. Um, ik zie dat we iets zijn uitgelopen, dus doe dat twee keer, twee gesprekken van vijf minuten. Um, en als we daarna allemaal terugkomen naar de mainstage, dan, um, dan gaan we vanaf daar verder met, verder met Piotr Antoni van PwC. Voor nu allemaal networking, ik ga het ook doen. Dus um, voor nu zeg ik ook tot ziens om tien uur op het mainstage, nu networking.